Listen to these four chords. What you are hearing is an older tuning system called mean tone. This older tuning system here sounds absolutely horrible. What's wrong? If you have a piano and you pay money to have it tuned, if it sounds like this after your tuner leaves your house, you will want your money back. In fact, if you play these chords before the tuner leaves, you won't pay them. It sounds that bad. I use these four major chords. A flat major, D flat major, G flat major, and B major. Those are simply four major chords in a row in the circle of force, and they all use at least two black keys. Now, let's listen again to those same four chords, but this time we will use a modern tuning system called equal temperament. It is likely that your ears will tell you now that these four chords are just fine. But why? What changed? The mathematics about why the mean tone tuning system was chosen in the past is extremely complicated, and I'm not going to go into the numbers. But I will tell you that once upon a time, long ago, this tuning system was used. The idea was to make music sound more pure or acceptable to the people of that time. The problem is that it worked very well for the white notes but very badly for the black notes. So if we write a piece of music in the key of D flat major, which is a very common key today, you get all of those awful sounds. However, if you stay away from those four chords with so many black notes, the other eight major chords sound just fine with mean tone, although it sounds a bit different from our modern tuning system. In fact, even today, some people prefer mean tone tuning for the white keys. The obvious problem is that in this system, you simply can't go to those other four major chords, which sound horrible. Now, here are the eight chords again, but with our modern tuning system, equal temperament. The sound of these eight chords is a bit different in equal temperament than it is in mean tone. But now we have two different tuning systems that both sound good. So the choice between one and the other is simply a matter of taste. I'm personally going to pick equal temperament every time because I am used to the freedom of being able to go to any key at any moment. And in equal temperament, all keys sound the same. Again, I'm not going near the math involved in understanding how these two systems are done. I'll only mention here that for many years I tuned pianos, so I'm intimately familiar with the details. There are still other tuning systems that were used in the past, and each of them has advantages and disadvantages. But the one thing all of them have in common is that people tried to make some keys sound better in their thinking than other keys. So the better they made some keys, the more awful other keys got. And in general, the problem keys were always the ones where the one chord had at least two black keys. The worst key in these systems was D flat major because of the primary chords. In that key, you have a one chord of D flat major, a four chord of G flat major, and a five chord of A flat major. Pretty much the worst chords for those systems. Over time, tuning systems tried harder and harder to smooth the bumps in the worst keys. And although they did not fully get to equal temperament until later, they got closer and closer to it. That means that by the time Bach wrote his well-tempered clavier, the tuning system was close to equal temperament. You could think of that tuning system as almost equal temperament. If you listen to Bach's 48 preludes and fugues in all keys, it may sound a bit different from our modern equal temperament system. However, 
Most of my students can't tell the difference. And even to me, the difference between almost equal temperament and equal temperament, what we use today, is rather small. The only other thing you need to know is that in modern music, equal temperament is probably used at least 99% of the time in the playing of modern music. It is likely you will only hear the older tuning systems in music that is a few hundred years old. Now, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and leave comments about what you like, questions about what you don't understand, and suggestions for the future and how I might improve this channel.